just got this in. So this is the TS100, and it is a digital soldering iron. I'm gonna tell you why you don't want this iron. You need this iron. If you're a hobbyist, if you work on quadcopters, or you do any kind of little uh, micro soldering, you need this iron, because this is exactly what you should be using. Forget buying a Weller, forget buying any of that junk. This is perfect, and actually, even though this is a portable iron, by the way, it can re it can re fully replace your main bench iron. And I'm gonna show you why. Let's go over a little bit about what you get in the box. So I bought the TS100 with the B2 tip. And this is pretty much the little pencil tip that most people are gonna buy when they first get this iron. As you can see, it's got a whole bunch of tips that you can buy for it. And then most of them are about 10 bucks a tip. That's that's what you can expect. It's about $10 a tip. As you can see, the iron actually comes in two different pieces. And you have to screw it together. There's one little screw, and they give you a spare screw, and there's this. So you have to, you screw the tip here into the base using this little hex wrench that they provide you. But anyway, so here is the B2 tip. So you're just your classic little pencil tip. Now, actually, this is actually not my favorite tip. I decided to get this tip. This is the BC2. You got a little more surface area, but it's also not too big. I just like the way it transfers the heat a little bit better than the pencil tip, although the pencil tip still does have its place. But yeah, these are my two favorite tips, the BC2 and the B2. Okay, so what is so cool about this iron? Okay, well, first of all, this is a, a computerized soldering iron. This has a little STM32 chip in here. And it's fully programmable. The firmware on this iron is actually open source. Uh, you can go on GitHub and download the firmware for this iron and really soup it up. And it gives it an entire really nice interface because when you first get it, it's just going to be pretty much basic. It's going to come with the firmware that the company provided, which isn't bad. But with the with custom firmware created by the community, or TS100, this thing is great. And I'm going to start showing you a little bit about that now. We're going to do some real soldering that I need to get done today. So there's no power supply for this when you buy it. It's expected that you either have your own uh, power supply. I would say minimum, minimum, you need 16 volts to use this. You can use it with 12 volts, but I really wouldn't recommend doing so. It just doesn't keep it hot enough. So look for any, look for something like a 19 volt power supply is honestly the sweet spot. It can accept up to 24 volts, but yeah. So this is actually a cable I have. It doesn't connect to a power supply, it connects to one of my batteries, one of my 16.4 uh, volt four cell batteries, which is really, really cool. So that means if you have a cable like this, an XT30, XT60 to a barrel connector, you can keep this out in the field with you and immediately get power to do a quick field repair. Look at how portable that is. That's just perfect. I just wanna point out how ergonomic this uh, iron is. I mean, look, it's just, it's. Just, it's a, just a joy to hold in your hand. We can either go right to soldering or we can go into the menu. And I'm gonna click this menu here. So we can choose the power source. As you can see, it's got a whole bunch of options for different power sources, five cell, six cell, or they're on DC. Basically, this is what will give you the battery life on the, uh, the, the home screen. It tells it what to expect. So yeah, I set to have 4S. We have soldering settings, um, boost mode. So what is boost mode? If you hold down this button, it will boost the iron for a short period of time from whatever you currently have it set at to like 400 something degrees. So this, so this firmware actually lets you go past the uh, manufacturer's recommended 400. We have sleep modes. Okay, so in the sleep mode section, we can decide what we want the iron to sleep at. So when you're not using the iron, it can tell if you just decide to put it down like this, which you can because it's designed to do that. It's not gonna burn your table. It's not gonna burn your little pad. You can just set it down like this, but you don't want this to get oxidized. So it will sense that it's inactive 
and it will drop the temperature. Really, really cool. And then when you pick it back up, it'll be ready to use again. That's the sleep timeout, that's the uh, shutdown timeout. It'll completely shut down the iron as well in case you walk away and you forget that you left your iron on, uh, God forbid. But hey, it happens. So you can configure all these settings right here from within the iron's graphical user interface with this awesome firmware. Right, so now we're gonna go to the user interface settings. So now the user interface settings are, you know, what do you want your temperature units to be? Do you want them to be in Celsius? Do you want them to be in Fahrenheit? I've gotten pretty used to using Celsius, so I'm just gonna stick with that. What do you want the display orientation to be? You know, all this scroll speed of the instructions, pretty, pretty basic. And finally, we're at the advanced options, so we can have a more detailed idle screen if we want that shows us statistics. Um, we can have a detailed soldering screen that shows us more information. And also, there's just a complete factory reset and calibrate temperature, which you should do. You should calibrate the temperature before you use it after you flash new firmware. Always calibrate the temperature after you flash new firmware. And you want to make sure that you're at room temperature when you calibrate. All right, so that's it. That's pretty much a general quick overview of the settings for this firmware. If you want to see more, check out the link below uh, to the GitHub. You can learn a little bit more about this firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and actually start soldering some things. So I've got two things that I want to solder today with this. I've got an XT60 cable that I'm just going to solder. I think a lot of people have trouble with these, and I just want to show you how easy this thing is to use. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to put a new connector on my King Kong Tiny 6 because this connector uh, is not so good and we want to use a, I want to use a newer connector. So I've got my helping hand here. I've got my XT60. I got this plugged into here. I'm going to go ahead and fire the iron up and it's heating up. It's heating up relatively quickly. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to yeah. I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go 420. All right, there we go. I think I've got a good angle now, so you guys can watch the temperature as I get this done. Look at that. I mean, we're really not. This is holding pretty good. All right, let's stop. What do we got? That's a beautiful joint. It's a beautiful joint to me. I know some people are probably gonna bitch, but hey, that's a good joint to me. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? You know, if you are having a lot of trouble soldering, like me, you don't suck at soldering. Your iron probably sucks, or you're not using the right solder. If I had known a long time ago, to do certain things, it would have saved me a lot of, it would have saved me a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Again, I'm just, I'm just, by the way, I'm just plugged into my battery. Remember, we're just plugged into a quad battery. Really, really cool. Four cell quad battery. All right, so let's get this one done. Just feeding the wire. Give it some delicious solder. Such a good iron. All right. Go ahead and put that down. I can just put that down there. I don't really have to worry about it because it will go off on me eventually. Let's take a look at that. It's pretty good. It's pretty good to me anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put these little heat shrinks on here. Oh, and there we go. So the sleep feature kicked in and it is sleeping down while I get to sit here and finish my job. And get this heat shrink 
And there we go, that's it. No fuss, no hassle, good heat. Was able to just get it on that joint and boom, done. Thanks to the TS100. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit harder of a job. So the first thing we need to do is we need to desolder the current connector that's on here. We have to take that and desolder it. All right, so I think it would be best to angle it this way. That way, if there is any solder that falls, it will just sort of fall down onto the mat. We're just gonna try to desolder now. I'm gonna lower the temperature because I really don't want it to be 420 degrees against this little board. And there's no reason for that. Straighten yourself out, TS100, come on, okay. And there's no reason for that. I think we can do it 360. I think we can do that. We are working with 6337 here, so there shouldn't be any reason to make it super, super hot. All right, so let's put that down. And easy, I just removed the, this one. And easy, I just removed that one. I have with me here are some the big FPV cables. Now remember, you don't need a whole lot. You just want to tin it just a little bit. All right, so these pads look kind of a uh, little nasty. I just want to fold them a little bit with some fresh solder. Not a lot, just a little bit. There we go. And this is a positive. There we go, we got some fresh solder on the pads. Look at how easy that was. And look, I'm, I'm, I don't have it at a crazy temperature. It's just 360 degrees. And stop, perfect. We've got a nice solid lock on the ground wire. And we got a nice solid lock on the positive wire. So perfect. And that's it. And I've got my upgraded Tiny Whoop power cable on my King Kong Tiny, Tiny 6. So I'm really happy about that. And look at how easy that was. Look at just how freaking easy that was with this iron. TS100 iron. Get it? Remember, this is not an iron that you want. This is an iron that you need. It's gonna save your electronics. It's gonna save you a ton of hassle. It's gonna save you from crying because you think you can't solder. Just get it, that's it. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. And as always, let me know if you have any questions if you, about the iron. Links to everything is gonna be in the description below. And uh, as always, have a great day guys.